जय हिंद इन कंटिन्यूशन विद द सर्जिकल वीडियोज ऑफ पेरियो सुभारती In today's video, we'll try to give you a demonstration of direct sinus lift on artificial model. The basic procedure we'll be trying to demonstrate. After the cutting part, we'll be trying to demonstrate in short the various direct sinus lift curates. And post reflection, we'll try to show basically the bone grafting part, which is done after reflection in direct sinus lift. Now, one thing which we have to understand is. there was a time when direct sinus lifts used to be done with micro motor so the issue with micro motor was that the chances of perforation of the membrane were quite a bit they used to simply perforate once we used to cut the window in bone so now we have shifted over in our department to piezo surgery all sinus lifts in patients we do with piezo surgery so the advantage of using piezo surgery over micro motor basically is that this modality does not damage soft tissue it is not that easy to cause a perforation of the chenidarian membrane with piezo surgery so in patients always and always we should be using piezo surgery for direct sinus lift however from a demonstration point of view since this is an acrylic model we'll be using micro motor so let us start with the demonstration so starting with our demonstration of direct sinus lift on this particular model we'll be demonstrating direct sinus lift in this particular area and this is how the model looks from inside and these are our sinus lift curates so let us start with the demonstration so first and foremost what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to give a crestal incision in the area of the tooth from where we require bone augmentation to be done so we have given a crestal incision and after that we are supposed to give two vertical incisions so this is sort of the teflon coating which is there some sort of polymer is there on this model and we have to reflect it so once the incisions are complete after this now we are supposed to use the periosteal elevator and can you see now the this is the similar reflection as we have to do in the patient's mouth so once this is done this is the rough site in which we have to do the augmentation so in this we have to prepare a window for that in the patient we can use a normal lead pencil so once we have made a lead pencil mark these are the approximate dimensions of the window that we have to cut in the patient's mouth from an immediate or direct sinus lift point of view so this the dimensions of this window basically depend upon the extent to which we require the bone augmentation to be done so suppose i am doing it with regard to implant placement in this area and let's say the height of the ridge the residual height is roughly 3 mm or so so according to cbct the base of the window should be roughly 3 mm above that height of the ridge so that retention of the bone graft occurs so this is the window which has to be made once the window has been marked now for demonstration purposes we'll be using only micro motor in this case so you can start with the movement so now what we are doing is in the patient's mouth uh, we don't have to use a chip blower there of course suction is there but here we are supposed to use a chip blower so what are we trying to do in shaving motion we are supposed to remove the bone in the patient's mouth this has to be feather strokes have to be there we have to use it in a very very gentle manner because if we push it inside that will lead to perforation in the patient's mouth perforation of the chenidarian membrane so it can be switched off once we'll just try to clear off the site once so can you see outer window outline has been made right now now we have to go deeper in this outline and for going deeper again shaving strokes have to be done 
so once we are doing these shaving strokes we'll be seeing a sort of a dark outline of the shenadarian membrane in the patient's mouth so we are still in the process where we are still inside bone hence we are not able to see that outline so now we are going deeper and pretty soon we should be encountering the membrane so this thickness of the bone varies from patient to patient here since this is a model the thickness is quite a bit so in one area we will just show it once so in one area are we able to appreciate we are able to see that the red shenadarian membrane so it has been exposed in that area similarly what we are supposed to do is in other areas also we are supposed to take it deeper till the time we end up getting exposure of the shenadarian membrane so this depth generally is slightly more in our model it is not that much in a patient's mouth so as we go closer we can try to reduce the speed also a little so that we don't end up perforating the membrane so the membrane is visible as such the membrane is visible from all around but the bone is quite thick in this model so generally what we can do is we can do this procedure on a goat head also so in a goat head also it is quite easily done but if availability is less we can go in for this particular model as such okay? so now we'll try to fracture it if possible this particular this thing so now this has been fractured so this is the bone part which has been removed and we have slightly the bone part remaining maybe here so what we are supposed to do is in that part also we will try to remove the bone so this is a preclinical model basically that we are doing so here also we are trying to remove the bone now once we have removed we can use these sinus lift curettes to try and lift it as such so can you see this is where our micromotor had touched it slightly so the membrane is slightly perforated from here but otherwise these are the curettes that we are supposed to use to lift it from here see once we have lifted it from here this is the sinus lift obtained so once the sinus lift is obtained in this area we can put in our bone graft and then an implant can be placed as so after reflection of the membrane now we have to get our bone graft ready so bone graft has to be uh, mixed with saline we need to have some amount of gauze piece gauze piece so as to this thing uh, ensure that it is simply swabbing with the saline part so once we have swabbed it as such with saline now we are ready to carry the bone graft below the membrane that we have lifted so this is a bone graft carrier syringe that we are using after loading it up in the bone graft carrier syringe now what we are supposed to do is the membrane which has been elevated has to be kept elevated so in the similar manner we can just keep it elevated and underneath the membrane we have to try and condense or put the bone graft whichever quantity is there we have to put it which are thing that we desire to be put the amount of bone formation which is required and we have to 
pack it up in this area. So once the packing up is done, we can suture it back. Now can you see in order for retention of this bone graft, this base has to be roughly above where the height of the bone is ending. Otherwise the bone graft won't be retained. So once we have condensed the bone graft, we can simply remove it and then we can place it back. Then we have to wait for bone formation to occur and then an implant can be placed. So this was a small demonstration. So again, as you must have realized that in implantology, the most challenging region is actually maxillary posterior area because not only is the bone density the least in this area that is D4, the quantity of bone also is towards the lesser side because of pneumatization of the maxillary sinus. Also in the demonstration, you realize that with micromotor, ultimately chances of perforation are quite a bit. Although that perforation was still more because this vinyl coating is actually very fragile in this model. So if you wish to learn more about sinus lift, do have a look at these two earlier videos which we had uploaded on our YouTube channel. The first one in which we had explained in detail about the armamentarium of direct as well as indirect sinus lift. And the second video in which we had used a piezo-surgery apparatus for demonstration of direct sinus lift on an animal model. The links of both these videos are there in the description. Our next surgical perio video would be on indirect sinus lift using osseo densification bursts. So please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a nice day. Jai Hind.